99% of developers don't get XSS. What does it even stand for? Extra spicy squirrels? Close enough. XSS stands for cross-site scripting. And fun fact, it's XSS instead of CSS simply because CSS was already taken. It's day one for every ethical hacker and the bread and butter for malicious ones. If you want to call yourself an intermediate JavaScript dev, an ethical hacker, or even just add one more computer science acronym to your toolkit, you have to know this. Forget SQL injection for a second. This is the vulnerability that allows attackers to steal user data, hijack sessions, and deface websites using one simple malicious line of code. You cannot call yourself a serious developer if you don't understand how XSS works. Today, I'm going to give you a concrete understanding of what XSS is and give you a whirlwind tour of the exact attack vectors, reflected, stored, and DOM-based, and the concrete defenses that actually work. XSS, or cross-site scripting, is a common web security vulnerability in which an attacker in injects malicious client-side code, usually JavaScript, into a web page that is then executed by another user's browser. The browser trusting the website executes the injected code as if it were legitimate. This happens because the website fails to properly handle untrusted input and output, allowing attacker-controlled data to reach the victim in a way that the browser interprets as safe. The browser trusting the website executes the injected code as if it were legitimate. This happens because the website fails to properly handle untrusted input and output, allowing attacker-controlled data to reach the victim in a way that the browser interprets as safe. The consequences of XSS can range from simple pop-ups to serious attacks such as stealing session cookies, capturing keystrokes, defacing web pages, or performing actions on behalf of the victim. XSS exploits the trust relationship between a user's browser and the web application, making it a particularly powerful and insidious vulnerability. XSS vulnerabilities are commonly categorized into three main types, stored or persistent XSS, reflected XSS, and DOM-based XSS. Stored XSS occurs when the attacker's payload is saved by the server, typically in a database, and served to users whenever they visit the affected page. For example, a malicious comment in a blog post or forum that contains the following would execute in every visitor's browser. Stored XSS is particularly dangerous because it can impact multiple users over a long period, and it can be used to steal cookies, implement keyloggers, or create self-propagating worms. The injected code is persistent and automatically delivered to users without requiring any specific interaction beyond viewing the page. Reflected XSS, in contrast, does not persist on the server. It occurs when malicious input, typically included in a URL or form submission, is immediately reflected in the web page's response without proper sanitization. For example, if a search page displays a search query back in the results page, an attacker could craft a URL like the following that executes in the victim's browser. Reflected XSS typically requires the attacker to convince the victim to click a specially crafted link or submit a manipulated form. Despite being transient, reflected XSS can be extremely harmful, especially when combined with social engineering, phishing, or CSRF attacks. The third category, DOM-based XSS, is entirely a client-side issue. In this case, the vulnerability exists in the web page's JavaScript. JavaScript code rather than server-side processing. For instance, if a script reads data from the URL, such as location.hash or document.url, and inserts it into the DOM using inner HTML without escaping, an attacker can inject arbitrary HTML or JavaScript. The distinguishing feature of DOM-based XSS is that the server does not process or reflect the malicious input. The attack executes entirely in the user's browser. This type of XSS is often harder to detect because it depends on specific client-side code paths and dynamic DOM manipulation. While cross-site scripting vulnerabilities can compromise client-side security, SuperTokens offers a comprehensive authentication solution that significantly reduces these risks through its advanced session management system. SuperTokens employs HTTP-only cookies to store session tokens, which are inaccessible to JavaScript running in the browser. This design prevents malicious scripts injected via XSS attacks from accessing or exfiltrating session tokens, thereby safeguarding user sessions from theft. The system issues short-lived access tokens alongside long-lived refresh tokens. When an access token expires, the front end can securely obtain a new one using the refresh token. This approach minimizes the window of opportunity for attackers to misuse stolen tokens and enhances overall session security. SuperTokens provides a backend SDK that facilitates secure session verification. By validating the session on each request, the system ensures that only authenticated users can access protected resources, reducing the risk of unauthorized access due to session hijacking. To further bolster security, SuperTokens incorporates built-in cross-site request forgery protection. 
This important feature prevents attackers from tricking authenticated users into performing unintended actions, thereby mitigating another vector of session-related attacks. By integrating super tokens into your application, you can enhance your defense against XSS vulnerabilities and other security threats, providing a more secure environment for your users. If you're looking to make your app bulletproof from security vulnerabilities, I highly recommend you check out super tokens using the link in the description and the pinned comment down below. Now back to the video. Preventing XSS requires a multi-layered approach. The most fundamental defense is output escaping. User input should be properly encoded before being rendered in HTML, JavaScript, or attributes. For example, using text content instead of inner HTML ensures that input is treated as plain text, not executable code. Input validation can help, though it is not sufficient alone. Content Security Policy, or CSP, provides an additional safeguard by restricting which scripts can execute. Modern web frameworks such as React, Angular and Vue automatically escape values in templates, greatly reducing the risk of XSS. Finally, developers should avoid dangerous functions such as eval, document.write, and unsanitized inner HTML, which can turn even seemingly harmless input into a vulnerability. So these three functions, eval, document.write, and unsanitized inner HTML, are inherently risky because they treat strings as executable code rather than plain data. When a web application inserts untrusted input into these functions, it effectively gives attackers a way to run arbitrary JavaScript in the victim's browser. Let's explain a little further. The eval function takes a string and executes it as JavaScript code. For example, eval user input will execute whatever the user provides. If an attacker can control user input, they can run any script they want, stealing cookies, redirecting users, or manipulating the page. Because eval executes in the local scope, it can access any variables or functions available, amplifying the potential impact. Document.write was originally intended to dynamically add HTML content during page load, and document.write executes strings as HTML. If untrusted inputs is passed to it, an attacker can inject script tags or other HTML elements that the browser will parse and execute immediately. Even if used after page load, it can overwrite the entire document content. And finally, unsanitized inner HTML. Assigning user-controlled content to element.innerHTML inserts it directly into the DOM. Unlike text content, which renders input as plain text, inner HTML parses the string as HTML. HTML, so any embedded script, image on error, or other executable code runs immediately. All three functions allow the browser to interpret untrusted input as executable code or markup, bypassing the browser's normal safety boundaries. Any input that an attacker control can become a potential XSS vector. Modern best practices recommend avoiding these functions entirely with untrusted data, or ensuring that input is properly escaped and sanitized before use. The standard script alert XSS followed by another script tag is merely a proof of concept. A real attacker's payload is designed for stealthy data exfiltration, and the primary target is the user's authenticated session. The entire class of attack fundamentally relies on one specific common server-side misconfiguration, failing to set the HTTP-only flag on the session cookie. When a cookie is set without the HTTP-only flag, it is accessible to any JavaScript running on that page, including an attacker's injected script via the document.cookie object. If that flag is set, document.cookie cookie will still run, but the protected cookie will be omitted from the return string, rendering this attack vector useless. Assuming that flag is missing, here is the technical breakdown of an attack. The attack vector is session hijacking via cookie exfiltration. The objective is simple steal the authenticated session cookie, send it to an attacker-controlled server, and use it to impersonate the victim. So here is the attacker's trap. The attacker sets up a single log parsing server, for example at attackerlogs.com. The endpoint is not a full website. It's just a listener, like a simple Python server or PHP script. It inspects all incoming GET requests, rips the query parameters like anything after question mark data equals, and appends them to a text file. So let's talk about two possible payloads, two variations. There's the noisy payload, or the page redirect. This is the classic method you've seen before. It uses encode URI component to ensure that any special characters within the cookie value, like a semicolon or equals or spaces, are properly URL encoded, and that they don't break the attacker query string. This payload works by triggering a full browser navigation. The victim's browser will briefly flicker, the network spinner will spin, and the browser history will record a redirect to the attacker's site before likely being redirected back. While fast, an observant user or admin might notice the anomaly. This is why it's noisy. The second payload is the stealth payload, or asynchronous exfiltration. This method is objectively far superior, more modern, and virtually invisible to the victim. It exfiltrates the data in the background without any page navigation. So here's how it works. The script creates a new image object in the browser's memory. It then sets the source attribute of that image to the attacker's server. So why is it stealthy? 
the browser, thinking it's just fetching a harmless tracking pixel or pixel.gif, dutifully sends a get request to that URL to load the image, quote unquote. The browser itself doesn't navigate, the page does not reload, and the user sees nothing. The attacker's server, however, doesn't even need to possess a file named pixel.gif. It simply logs the incoming request, which contains the victim's complete encoded cookie data appended as a query string. This is the exact same technique used by legitimate analytics and ad tracking networks. In both cases, the attacker now has the victim's cookie. They load their own browser, use dev tools to inject the stolen cookie into the browser's storage for the vulnerable site, refresh the page, and now they are fully logged in as the victim. If you want to learn how to build Docker, Redis, and compilers from scratch, check out CodeCrafters down below. And if you want to bulletproof your application from XSS vulnerabilities, as well as many other security risks, I highly recommend you check out Super Tokens using the link in the description and the pinned comment. As always, thank you very much for watching, and happy coding!